I saw this in a bee catalog and I could not resist. And it helps me when I talk about the podcast of all the things you could use. I could apply that there. When you go to do your first frame, you're going to take your hive tool. And what I typically see is, I typically see the propolis is down here. I'm going to wedge my hive tool down until I break that seal all the way through. You may possibly see it here on the lip. Whatever it takes to get it off. You also have to be cognizant when you take this thing out that you may have bridge comb from here down to the frame that's underneath it. You've all done inspections, you've probably seen this. I'm going to pry down, get that first frame broken. On that side, I'm going to pry down, get that frame broken. I'm going to turn my tool over, I'm going to get underneath that lip, and I'm going to pry it off. Me personally, I take out my other gadget. Just bought this. Not sure if I love it yet or not. But I do, I do hate when you get the... Tell me you've been here. You pry the one side up and you have it. And everything's glued and you're trying to get the other one up. And you're trying and you're trying and things are really glued in there. And you drop it and it goes boom. Because it's heavy. You don't drop it when you use this. Generally. The one thing that I find that I don't like is I have it. Now what am I going to do with it? <laughs> you know, drop it's really it. awkward to hold. What I end up doing is using my other hand here to support it. There's another thing that you see when you when you inspect the hive is, um, if I have this right and remember what Tim Schuler said, you want to, what do you do with it, right? I think what he recommended is you go like this, and you flip it this way, but then, I, I don't know, I've never figured this out. But anyway, now I'm looking at the other side. I will tell you when you put your frame back, unless you have a motive not to do it, you should always put it back in the way you got it, okay? I'm going to pop frame number one out of the hive. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to describe it to my phone. You might have a helper. You tell them what it looks like. You may try and register it in your brain, whatever the case may be. This is one ugly frame. <laughs> I'm looking at my frame and I'm looking for, and, and here's a, th a thought. The outside frames typically have honey, pollen. They don't often have brood. If you find brood in that outside frame, something's going on. Why? The bees will, depending on the weather and the conditions, whatever, they move around in the hive. If it's cold in the morning and the sun is hitting this side of the hive, you ever see the movie The Replacements where they're in the huddle and the guy throws up on the ground and they all kind of move to the side? They will do that in a cluster. They'll kind of move around or do whatever to get to the warmth. If you find that they're all in this side of the box, maybe that's the side the sun is on. Maybe you don't have your hive in a good location and, it's, and, in, and you're trying to compensate for that. I take my first frame out, I look at it, I make my observations, I put it down. You can put it here, you can put it on the ground again out of the way where you're not going to be kicking it. You can do whatever you want with it. One thing I'll suggest to you, when you take the top cover off, when you take the inner cover off, when you take the, any of the frames out of the hive and there's bees on it, who could be there? Queen. You don't want to just take this thing and throw it on the ground and now your queen's there. Is it likely she's on the outside? No, but she could be. Is it likely she's over here and you just set this thing down and dumped her outside? She could be. So always just take a moment, make sure she's not there and then go about your business. When you are looking at that frame that has brood on it, there is a strong possibility that she's there. That's where she lives. So you want to be careful. In your apiary, you either have it or you don't, where you take the frame out and you can hold it up and you have the sun to your back and the sun can shine down and you can see right down into the, into the bottom of the cell or not your call. You know, sometimes if you need to know, you can take that brood, you look to see if the queen is on it. I have to walk out into the field about this far and I have to look because I live in the woods and that's the only place I have. And what I see here is I see kept honey in the corners. I see a lot of open cells, probably about 
40% NIC pollen, yellow, and orange. On the other side, it looks exactly the same. And, and this is what it sounds like when I'm talking to myself on my phone. And I'm gonna come back, and I'm gonna do one of two things with this. I use this, and I usually take two or three frames and I put them here. I do like to keep them tight so the B spaces here, they're against the box, the wind's not blowing them, they're not getting chilled, whatever the case may be. And then I'm going to go in and I'm systematically going to go to each frame and I'm going to take a look. I got some brood here, a lot of pollen, you know, I'm going to look. I may take this and put it back in the hive now because I got space to move. I'm going to go to the next one. Holy cow, this thing is loaded with honey and it's loaded with pollen. Wow. The bees and so on. I'm looking at my hive for my objective. Now, let's say that I'm looking at a frame that has a full... I have a full load of, of uh, bees here, right? I'm talking to myself, this frame is 80% covered with bees. This frame has brood. I think one of the things also, as a side note, we don't look at our bees. We just don't stop and go, wow, that's a nice looking bee, or that bee is really beat. We're just doing our business looking at the frames and we forget to look at the bees. Are they shiny, nice new bees? Or do they have deformed wings? Do you literally see mites, which you will? Take the time when you're doing your inspection to look also at the bees, not just what's going on inside. I have a frame that has all kinds of brood on it. What does a brood look like? Is it bullet brood? Is it regular brood? Is it shotgun pattern, meaning sporadic? Or is it a solid pattern? In a typical frame, which looks great, we had a picture of one in the last meeting in Belvedere. We had brood all through the center of the frame. On the outside perimeter there were eggs, I'm sorry, larvae. And then even outside of that, if you looked, you'd probably find the eggs. And up in the corner, you found capped honey. Fabulous, great, wonderful, that's what you're looking for. If I see that, if I'm holding that frame in my hand, am I good? Am I queen right? Yeah. You know, and if, if you're doing a visual inspection and you're seeing them bring pollen in, they're bringing pollen in for something. So that's first clue, but here I'm standing here with the proof. Do I need to really dig through every single frame in the box, top and bottom, to find the queen? I don't. If you're a new beekeeper, is it okay to go dig through every single frame and see what's on every one of them? You know, see that the pattern is in the middle and that the frames on the outside are just stored pollen and whatever? When you're in the time frame, where you have two cycles of brood to go before the first frost, you have to inspect the whole hive. You have to know what you have in there. You need 10 frames of honey. You need X amount of pollen. You need X number of brood and bees in order to survive the winter. So again, whatever your objective is for the inspection, that's how deep you go in and look. One last question. You're inspecting your hive and there's propolis all over the place. When you take these things out, are you scraping it out? Are you flinging it on the ground? Are you taking your bridge comb and flinging it on the ground? Nay, nay, don't do that. Get yourself a friendly little Maxwell container or a plastic Ziploc bag or whatever and put that stuff in there. Don't be throwing it on your apiary. What if you have something in your hive? Now you've contaminated the ground and you're possibly contaminating your other hive sitting right next to it. You can take that wax and do something with it. You can take your hive tool and clean it before you go to the next hive. Some will go as far, and I'm not this disciplined of changing their gloves between each hive. I don't, I don't know what your preference is on that. So now I'm gonna go through the process of returning the hive to order. I'm gonna put all my frames back in the same order and in the same direction that I put them in. 
Now, if I have an objective of, I want to move the brood, I want to pull an old frame. Incidentally, all these ones that you see here, they're the old ones that I just pulled out recently. That's why they look so beat. They got George Schaefer's tag on the top. <laughs> and I replaced them with new ones. And it started raining while I was doing it. So I still have ones in here that have foundation, right? I don't know what happened to that one. That one's even worse. So be it. I have a drone brood frame that I'm going to put in. So, and, and when you're going to go out and do this type of work, bring a box with you. You ever carry one of these around and you get to go put it in and, and the thing is knocked out? <laughs> That's so frustrating when the stuff is ruined. So I'm going to put my hive back together. I'm going to set the frames however I want them. I'm going to return the, the inner cover, the outer cover, and I'm going to step away. And my father always told me as a young boy, the job is not done until you've done the cleanup. Put your house in order, clean up your yard, take notes, do I need to mow the grass, clean the front entrance of the hive, do whatever. Take your stuff back. I would encourage everybody, after your inspection, to build time to document what you saw. Because four days from now, which frame was it that had, or which one of your three hives had all the brood? Which one of your three hives had all the drones? So two, three, wait, I, you don't remember. <laughs> Do it now, right? Get your stuff in order, clean your stuff. If you broke anything, do it. And um, hopefully over the years, this will become routine. You'll just do it second nature and um, you'll have no challenges. So. I think I hit on everything. I don't recall anything that, oh, one thing I remember. It's not always a beautiful 70 degree day when you're inspecting your hives. There are times when you're gonna inspect your hive at the end of the season for mites, so on. Or you're gonna go in and you're gonna put a feeder frame in. Fill a feeder frame. When you open your hive, do you want to throw your cover and whatever on the ground when it's cold and leave the hive open? No, not really. So I'm going to crack the inner cover off and I'm going to slide it. But I'm going to leave half the hive protected. So when you're doing your inspections, think about this stuff. And, and protect the temperature inside the hive. They've worked hard to keep the thing 93 degrees in there. And you're, it's like, like your father always said, close the damn door, you know? So. Um, Keep that in mind when you're going, in, and especially when the weather is not uh, suitable. So I'll stop there and say, that's what I got, and I'll take whatever questions anybody has, thoughts, comments, if you want to share different practices. How often should you uh, go and inspect your bees? That is, uh, that is a question that depends upon, I'm going to say, look, we all live in a Varroa age, right? Beyond making sure you're queen right, and once you have a queen, chances are you're gonna have a queen for a year and so on. Most of the time you're gonna go back to make sure you have your Varroa and your pests under control. How often do you need to check Varroa? We're gonna talk about that. But um, in the springtime, when they start to build bees, that's when the Varroa is gonna ramp. In after the foraging season and they start to build the winter bees, that's when the varroa is going to ramp. So in the early season, you're going to want to inspect your bees more often. The reality for me, I'm a weekend beekeeper. I work five days a week in an office and when I get home, I can't do it. Weekends are inspection time. If it's raining on the weekend, it's every two weeks. I would say you don't need to be in your hives every day, every week but you do want to be in them every couple weeks. Again, the answer to that question is, what's going on in your hive and why do you need to inspect? You go and inspect for an objective. If you're a new beekeeper and you want to inspect every couple days, the, the discussion is, use one hive and leave the other ones alone. Charlie? Yeah, this time of the year, it's El Swarm season. 
So you should check your AP 